Australia is a land of unique and fascinating wildlife, home to marsupials like kangaroos, wombats and koalas. However, one group of animals that is noticeably absent from Australian ecosystems is monkeys. While primates flourish in nearby Indonesia, Papua New Guinea and other regions of Southeast Asia, they never made it to the Australian continent naturally. This absence is not coincidental, but rather the result of a combination of geological, evolutionary and ecological factors that have shaped Australia's biodiversity over millions of years. One of the primary reasons Australia lacks monkeys is a powerful biogeographic boundary known as Wallace's Line. This invisible line runs between the islands of Bali and Lombok, as well as between Borneo and Sulawesi, dividing the animal species of Asia from those of Australasia. It was first identified by Alfred Russell Wallace, a 19th century naturalist who noticed that despite their geographical proximity, the species of animals on either side of this line were vastly different. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button, hit the bell icon and like this video as it's the best way to support this channel. And if you enjoy it, consider sharing it around. The reason for this stark division lies in the deep ocean trenches that separate these regions. Even during past ice ages, when sea levels were much lower, these deep waters never fully receded, maintaining a permanent barrier between Asian fauna, including primates, and the Australian continent. As a result, while mammals like elephants and tigers roamed freely across much of Asia, they were unable to move into Australia. During the ice ages, much of Earth's water was locked in glaciers, leading to lower sea levels. This created land bridges that allowed animals to migrate between continents. For example, much of what is now Indonesia was connected to mainland Asia in a region called Sundaland. This allowed species like tigers, elephants and monkeys to move freely between areas like Thailand, Malaysia and Sumatra. However, Australia was part of a different landmass known as Sahul which included Papua New Guinea and Tasmania. While Sahul was connected internally, it was never fully linked to Sundaland. The oceanic gap between the two landmasses was still wide, preventing land animals, including monkeys, from naturally making their way to Australia. By contrast, humans, using boats, were able to cross this water barrier about 65,000 years ago. But monkeys, which rely on forests and land for movement, never had that opportunity. Interestingly, fossil evidence suggests that ancient primates once existed in Australia, but they went extinct long before modern monkeys evolved. Fossils of early primate relatives, dating back around 55 million years, have been found, indicating that Australia may have once had small primates or primate-like mammals. However, as Australia drifted further from other continents and its climate changed, these early primates disappeared leaving no modern primate descendants. This extinction event was likely influenced by habitat loss and competition from emerging marsupial species that adapted more successfully to the environment. Australia's isolation has played a significant role in shaping its unique fauna. The continent broke away from Gondwana, a prehistoric supercontinent, around 55 million years ago. By this time, early primates had evolved in Africa and began spreading across Eurasia, but Australia had already drifted too far away to receive these species. Instead of primates, Australia developed an entirely different set of mammals, marsupials. These pouched mammals, including kangaroos, koalas and bandicoots, took on many of the ecological roles that placental mammals, like monkeys, filled elsewhere. For instance, tree kangaroos live in trees and eat leaves, much like monkeys do in Asia. Possums too have adapted to tree-dwelling life using prehensile tails similar to those of some primates. If monkeys had arrived in Australia, they would have faced competition from these well-adapted marsupial species. However, the evolutionary trajectory of Australia ensured that its mammals remained distinct from those of the rest of the world. Even if primates had managed to spread as far as Sulawesi, an island that lies within Wallacea, they still would have faced the immense challenge of crossing open water. Unlike humans, monkeys do not build boats, and they are generally poor swimmers. While some animals, such as elephants, are known to swim long distances 
and may have colonized islands that way, monkeys lack the stamina and physical adaptations for extended swimming. The ocean gap between the nearest monkey inhabited islands and Australia, known as the Lombok Strait and the Timor Sea, was simply too wide for them to cross naturally. Without a land bridge or an accidental rafting event, where animals drift on floating vegetation, monkeys remain restricted to Asia. If hypothetically monkeys had reached Australia, could they have survived? The answer depends on several factors, including climate, competition, and food availability. While Northern Australia has tropical rainforests, similar to those found in Southeast Asia, much of the continent is arid or semi-arid. Monkeys, which rely on dense forests for food and shelter, may have struggled to expand beyond the northern regions. As mentioned earlier, Australia's marsupials already occupied many of the ecological niches that monkeys may have filled. For example, tree-dwelling marsupials, such as possums and tree kangaroos, could have competed with primates for resources. And Australia had unique predators, such as marsupial lions, and giant reptiles that could have posed a threat to monkey populations. Additionally, Australia's harsh environment, with its frequent droughts and bushfires, could have made it difficult for primates to thrive. Speaking of success, running a business means juggling multiple tasks, from managing sales and inventory to handling finances and customer relationships. That's why I'm excited to partner with Odoo, the all-in-one business management software that simplifies and streamlines everything in one place. Whether you're a small startup or an established enterprise, Odoo offers customizable modules that fit your needs perfectly. From accounting and CRM to e-commerce and project management, one of the things I love about Odoo is its approach to a free-for-life membership for your first app. Odoo's strength lies in its flexibility. With a huge range of apps in one convenient site, you can start with just the essential tools, and as your business grows, you can easily integrate more modules to match your evolving needs. Plus, with Odoo's user-friendly interface, it's easy to get your team up and running, making your operations smoother and more efficient. Best of all, it's only $34.40 per month for access to all of their apps. Before I was a geology content creator, I was an avid e-commerce seller, and I wish I had Odoo back when I started to take the hassle out of learning to create compelling websites. With Odoo's e-commerce platform, setting up sleek and professional online stores has never been easier. If you're ready to take your business to the next level and have all your tools in one integrated platform, Odoo is the perfect solution. Check out the link in the description to learn more and see how Odoo can transform the way you manage your business. While monkeys never reached Australia naturally, humans have introduced primates in small numbers. Some escaped pet monkeys have been spotted in parts of the country, but they have never established wild populations. Australia enforces strict biosecurity laws to prevent the introduction of foreign species that could disrupt its fragile ecosystems. Introducing monkeys could have serious ecological consequences, similar to what has happened with other invasive species like rabbits, cane toads and foxes. The absence of monkeys in Australia is not a simple coincidence, but the result of a complex history of geography, evolution and ecology. Deep ocean barriers, Australia's long-term isolation, competition with native species, and the lack of a land bridge all played roles in keeping primates out of the continent. Despite being so close to Indonesia, Australia remains a land of marsupials rather than primates. Its unique biodiversity is a demonstration to the way geographic separation can shape the evolution of life over millions of years. While monkeys, in their modern form, may never have called Australia home, the continent remains one of the most fascinating places for studying how life develops in isolation. I hope you found this as interesting as I did, and as always, thanks for watching.